So I think when thinking about elderly patients with CML, um, th there's a few areas where we need to focus on. And, and primarily the side effect profile for patients, we now have a fantastic treatment for CML in the form of tyrosine kinase inhibitors. And um, most people respond very well to them, but not all tyrosine kinase inhibitors are the same and they do have a different safety profile. And side effects for maybe younger patients would have less impact on their life compared to older patients. So um, it could be that fluid retention for an older patient means that they're unable to leave the house and therefore lose their independence. Um, cardiovascular toxicity would be more important to consider in these patients because they may have other cardiovascular vascular, um, risk factors. So, so really with this talk I have reviewed the um, side effect profile for the different TKIs and discussing where it would be benefit, beneficial to use which drug. And then also another part of the talk is discussing um, about trying to keep these patients out of hospital. So using monitoring in the community of their bloods um, and also home delivery service um, so that we can allow patients to not have to spend um, the, the stress and time coming up to hospital appointments when often they can be have their bloods taken in the community, have telephone clinics and phone to see how they are and not have that disruption for them with frequent visits. Um, and then just the final discussion within how why elderly people are different are um, optimising when we can stop the drug for them. So for some some patients now, whether they're young or old, we're looking at stopping treatment because of the excellent molecular response. Uh, but for if we can remove a small amount of side effect profile by stopping the drug, then it can make an even huge impact on the older population with chronic myeloid leukaemia. So um, I think it's just thinking more carefully about those three main areas for the elderly patients with myeloid CML. So when thinking about first-line treatment, we have five tyrosine kinase inhibitors available at present. And I think first-line treatment um, is, is more, even more, um, not controversial, but at present, imatinib is often used first-line. And I think second-line agents, so nilotinib, desatinib and bisutinib, um, can all be used second line, but imatinib is now available as a generic. So in terms of cost to the NHS, it is significantly cheaper. So a patient previously would have cost the NHS about £30,000 a year, and now with generic imatinib available, it is £700 a year. So a huge difference. So I think in terms of deciding about the cost impact and the choice of drug that does have a, a, a part to play in the decision. And then the other decision is with um, longer term follow-up in terms of safety data. We have longer term follow-up for imatinib and we are now have a, more concerns about cardiovascular toxicity for second line agents. And so particularly for the elderly or older patient we need to think a bit more carefully about is the benefit of getting a quicker and deeper molecular response from a second line um, tyrosine kinase inhibitor, does that outweigh the benefit and the safety of the first line treatment with, with imatinib with less concerns about cardiovascular toxicity? Every patient would be assessed individually and decided about the right treatment for them. And I think it's just about being aware of all of the side effects for all of the drugs and then discussing with the patient who we would feel the, the, they would benefit the most.